Hello and welcome. Today I'm going to show you how to upgrade your Razer to run on two 40 volt Ryobi batteries. Now you can do this to any Razer. Um, I'm going to be working on an MX650, but it'll the same process will work on anything. Your mounting is just going to be a little different. And the reason that we're using two batteries is because if you do it with just one, you get this weird issue where if you pin the throttle instantly, the battery will shut itself off. And it's really annoying. So I've learned that by wiring two batteries in parallel, you don't have that problem anymore. So let's get to it. The first thing you're gonna to need to do is to remove the plastics. And in order to do that, you got four screws up front, two you can see right here. And if you look down inside, there's two more down here. And under, underneath the rear tail, there's two back here that run uh, parallel with the ground. Um, they're all Allens. You take those out and then you can just slide that whole piece off. This black part here can stay on. Um, there's a screw in the front. You don't need to take it out because that will just stay in place. So you get the plastics off. Step number two is to remove the plastic parts that surround your batteries. So this has two screws in the bottom, two screws in the front, and two Allens on the top here and here. Under those, everything comes apart. Um, the back side, or the left side rather, that has the uh, buttons and the charger in it, that's got a couple wires. I can show you right here. So you got three clips, you can just unsnap all those and both sides will come off. Now. All right, so I just took the plastic cover off of the left side of the bike. This is the side with the buttons on it and the charger. So here are the three plugs that you're gonna unhook. And we're gonna reuse two of them, except for this little one. This little one is the one that goes to the charger. So we're just gonna leave that unplugged because we're not gonna charge it that way anymore. Um, we'll use the plug to the controller, of course. And the last one is the one we need to cut. So this one goes to the battery. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cut it as close, both wires way back here, as close to the battery as I can get. So it gives me as much wire as I can get a hold of. So I'm gonna cut it here on the black. And on the other side, I'm gonna cut it to the other side of the fuse. I wanna keep the fuse, so I'm gonna reuse that. So I'm gonna cut it right by the battery terminal. All right, so here is the battery plug that I just cut off of the batteries. We're gonna reuse this. And the way we're gonna wire this together is you're gonna take your new mounts, you're gonna take both of the red wires, connect them together, and then connect them to the red wire from the plug. You're gonna do the same with the black. You're gonna take both black wires from both of your mounts. You're gonna connect them together. You're gonna to connect them to the black wire coming from the plug we just cut off. And that's all there is to wire in this thing. All right, so this controller normally mounted right here and I'm just going to switch it around and I'm gonna mount it right here onto this top tray. Don't even need to unplug anything to move it. And if you can't, you, you can reuse the screws that used to hold uh, this battery on. And if you can't get both of them to fit, just put one of them in and then just put a zip tie through the other side. That's what I ended up doing. So I've switched sides of the bike now. And this is the bracket that goes right here. It used to hold the bottom batteries in. This is what we're gonna mount our new uh, battery holders to. So I've taken it out. Here's my batteries with the with the new mounts, so I put the mounts on. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put some two-sided tape on the back of this. I'm gonna put it right where I want it, over this back, the back mounting holes, which are back here, right? We want it mounted here so that these batteries are offset to one side. So I'm gonna put the tape on the bottom of this. I'm gonna stick it right where I want it, get it stuck. Then I can take the batteries out and I can drill, drill the some holes and put some screws through here and it'll all, stay together. All right, there we go. Now I just gotta put some screws through those holes, make sure it all stays together and we're good to go. All right, so I got my screws in. It's all held together nice and tight now. And wiring it is as simple as taking both of these reds, I'm gonna connect them together and I'm gonna connect them to the red wire of the plug that I cut off the batteries. So there's my red wire, I'm just gonna get connect all three of these together with one of these twist caps, and then I'm gonna do the same to the black wires. There we have it. All the reds are together, all the blacks are together. We've got our plug, so we can plug it back in. We're good to go. It's just gonna be screwing this in place, and then we have to 
cut the hole in the side of the plastic so the battery fits. All right, so we're to the part where we need to cut out the hole so the batteries can actually fit in. And what I've done is I've put this one side of the plastic on. This is the side that we're gonna obviously create the hole. And I left the other side off and I took my drill here and I put a long bit on it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reach through from this side. I can kind of see where I want the holes to be, where I want the hole to go. So I'm just gonna reach through with my long drill and put the four corner holes in. So I've made my four corner holes and then I opened them up uh, with bigger and bigger bits until I got to 5 16 um, And that's gonna be big enough that I can fit my, my saber saw blade in there and I'll just cut straight lines. I'll throw some tape on it so I can actually see what a straight line looks like and then I'll just cut it out. All right, so here is everything back together. And as you can see, the batteries, they stick out the side an inch, maybe just barely over that. But that's what gives you enough space here to be able to pull these things in and out. And it's not enough to interfere with your foot placement on the peg. So I think that worked out just perfectly. So if you enjoyed this video or you learned anything, please hit the like and subscribe buttons. That would help me out very much. Take care.